We must guard against the acquisition of unearned race bibs in the influencer running brand industrial complex. Do influencers really take bibs away from serious runners? I mean, it's not like the BAA is going to tell somebody who met the qualifying standard that they can't run the race and then go give away a bib to somebody who didn't even BQ, right? Whether or not races should be giving out bibs to influencers is a big discussion on social media. From a marketing perspective, I get it. If influencers receive bibs, they will create a tremendous amount of content that will generate social media impressions at very low cost for race organizations. But I believe this could be problematic for the purity of the sport, especially when it comes to a race like the Boston Marathon. As a serious runner, I hold the Boston Marathon in the highest esteem. Qualifying for and actually making the cutoff and getting to run Boston is something that took me four years and thousands of dollars to achieve. It was my heroic journey. There were trials and tribulations. I met mentors and friends along the way. It took dedication and sacrifice and a good paying job. After all, you can't put a price on epicness. And you know what? After many, many tries, I did it. I qualified for the Boston Marathon. And then I got BAA'd, so I had to go do it all over again. Running the Boston Marathon was one of the proudest moments of my life because I pursued and achieved something of value to me, proving to everyone that I was a real runner and also getting to wear the Boston jacket so that people would never ever forget how fast I am. Now, I'm all about that content. Content is a way for me to continually remind everyone of everything I've achieved and also maybe lead them to believe that I'm capable of achieving more than I ever have. But content alone is not a reason to qualify for Boston. For everyone who says that influencers don't take bibs away from runners, let's look at this objectively with math. Let's say the field for the Boston Marathon is 30,000 runners. About 6,000 spots are reserved for charity runners. That leaves 24,000 spots for qualified runners. If more than 24,000 people qualify, the BAA will get to gleefully tell some people no. Let's say in a list of all the fastest qualifiers, you are number 24,000. And let's say the BAA decides to give a bib to an influencer. Now there are only 23,999 spots available. As runner number 24,000, you have just been BAA'd. Influencers, if you want to influence people, influence them to do the hard work and let the results speak for themselves. Don't influence them to skip the hard work just because they have connections. Have we forgotten that running should be a meritocracy? Documenting the journey is important, but you have to actually go on the journey. We don't approve of pros doping to shortcut their way to achievement. So should other shortcuts really be okay? If having the talent or work ethic to qualify for the Boston Marathon is no longer something that means anything, then we've lost something very precious to the sport. Something to strive for, something to work hard for, something to be proud of, something valuable to pursue and hopefully someday achieve. Just because you can't qualify for Boston today doesn't mean you can't in the future. And no, not everyone deserves to run Boston. I may be practically a pro, but I will never qualify for the Olympic trials. I mean, I could, if not for any number of excuses. The point is, let's not ruin what it means to run Boston.